my line for this Bluetooth microphone. If you're wondering why um, I'm having a Bluetooth mic, it's because I'm going to be very daring today, and I'm going to try to have this session recorded as well uh, on my own uh, video. And if it's uh, fairly successful, I'll probably upload it to my blog, but if it's a disaster, you won't find anything there. show any today because all my videos are disciplinarily related. They are either re related to my research or to my di to my subject area. So I have nothing to show. So I can't sh talk about cars either, right? So I really do not know what to say today. Eh? So that's why I'm taking a big grand leap into the dark. Okay? Okay. Over the years, um, Okay, uh, my, my, I've, been, I've been in the service for 20 years already. At first, when I started as a young teacher, um, they threw me into a junior college. They threw me into two JCs, right? uh, the two of the top JCs. And then I, was very, I had a very traumatic first year of my teaching experience. So those of you who are coming here, new to the school, fresh out of NIE, I, I, I really, truly, not only I empathize with you, but I sympathize with you. <laughs> so, um, um, and then initially my PowerPoint style was very Singaporean, okay? But at, um, after 20 years of the ser in the service, I, I have had the privilege of sitting in many different presentations and keynotes, uh, including two Steve Jobs keynotes, and uh, well, that one not funded by an idea, not funded by an idea, either, by our money. Um, um, I have to do that. So, my presentation style has become more and more Americanized. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so anyway, if it's a culture shock. So, don't play play. <coughs> of course, I could have spelt it the Singapore, the, the English way, which is don't, don't play play. Uh, but then, as I said, my my second subject is English, and I know that there are many English teachers here, obviously. So I didn't want to offend anybody right from the start. Because it's, um, yeah, okay, so I decided to put it in proper spelling, but bad grammar. Okay, so don't play play. Now, basically, I would honestly, seriously like us to think of what is meant by these three words, okay? It's very, very, it's deceivingly simple, huh? It's deceivingly simple, um, but actually the, my intention for the next half an hour or so is to unpack as much meaning as we can from these three words, okay? If you're thinking that's only two words, first it's don't play, I still say it's three words, because it's do not play, okay? So, three words still, huh? Don't play, play. Now, <laughs> Okay, sorry. You, you, can, you, can tell when, you can tell when the speaker is bad when he starts laughing at his own joke. <laughs> okay, now, at first, my intention was to ask you to, for, to, to, for volunteers as to what you mean by don't play play. Okay, but 
I do not know that. I mean, you have a very nice and receptive audience. Um, but uh, also, on the other hand, it's 8.30 you know, and some of us, including myself, haven't had my coffee because it's got the battle of the PID jam. Um, and then, so maybe I shall ask for, does anyone, I mean, okay, don't play play, what does don't play play generally mean, uh, actually, seriously speaking, from a, from a singlish point of view? What, what do we understand by don't play play? Okay, we don't have to, no need to yell out, uh, seriously, no need to yell out, just think among yourselves, okay? Because if you want to benefit, um, sorry to sound so arrogant, but you see us, huh? I know somebody came out for ACSR, right? But anyway. Now, um, it, well, hopefully if you can benefit from today, uh, I need you to, to, to I need to think seriously with me. Because my presentation my presentation sound quite 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 casual, but actually my meaning quite cheap, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So please uh, okay, I think because this school actually they, they know what they're doing, uh, right? So don't play play. So I want you to think about what is meant by this, even though you don't necessarily want to share it. With me. You can share with your colleagues, those sitting around you. Um, okay? So, so, generally speaking, in Singaporean terms, don't play play means we mean business. Okay? Um, um, <coughs> so, so it, it's generally an expression of serious, serious intent. Meaning, um, yeah, okay, so it's an expression of serious intent. So let's get down to business, okay? Let's, I, and, and this is very interesting. Uh, when, I, when I show this slide, everybody kind of quietens up. That's very, very interesting. This is called, it's not new, yeah. Okay, so because when once you, it's interesting that once we see this slide, don't play play, we mean business, you all suddenly become very serious. That's not what I intended, but it's very intriguing nevertheless, okay? Now, but are there other, can, can, this, can this thing be played around with? Uh? Can this thing be played around with? For example, what do we mean by play? Okay, and um, can this assumption that we mean business is necessarily a good thing be questioned? Okay, so don't play play. But my question to you this morning is, why not play? Okay. Are there benefits to considering play? Are there benefits to, con to adopting a more playful disposition? And if there are benefits to adopting a more playful disposition towards pedagogy design, um, what exactly, or what roughly, if you're wondering why I'm looking around, I'm looking around for a clock so I can keep pace because I don't, uh, Okay, so um, um, so uh, uh, what 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 might we mean by play? Okay, because I've attended a couple of talks in Singapore where people have different understandings about play, and this is a good thing. Okay, but my intention today is to kind of get us to think about what we mean by play, and play in terms of learning design. So, what do we understand by play? So, for example. I'm trying to think of how to set this up. Huh? Um, so, I know I told you I can't talk about cars today, but for example, we take this car, the Mitsubishi I. Now, people who buy the Mitsubishi I uh, are very intelligent people, you know. <laughs> so, they deserve your respect. Yes. But of course, respect has to be earned. Uh, okay? <laughs> I don't have a Mitsubishi I, uh, this is not my car, okay? <laughs> but honestly, the I is a very intelligent car. Why is it intelligent? I mean, it, why is it intelligently, why does it reflect intelligent design? Why does it reflect imagination? Why does it reflect um, thinking about problems differently? Okay? <clears throat> this particular I is actually an R&D plate, right? So it's a little bit more special than the normal eyes. Sorry, okay, I know, like, <coughs> I, I, I know, I know, Mrs. Long has an eye. Like. 
But this is a little bit more special than Mrs. Lung's eye because, um, because you all know why the R&D play is here? I think this one you can have audience participation. It's quite, you know, I'm sure someone here must know why there's an R&D play. It's, an it's, an it's a fully electric car, so it's not just a hybrid. Huh? It's a fully electric car. So, but, uh, but what, what does that mean? Never mind, it's not relevant, to, not really relevant for today's conversation, right? Okay? But why is even the normal, normal typical eye special? Okay, so it's a small car, right? So normally small cars, where's the engine? In the, in, in, with respect to the location of the car, the engine is, for small cars, generally in front, right? Okay? So that's generally because of space efficiency and also, also for traction. Now, um, in the eye, where's the engine? At the back. And not only at the back, but there's not much of a back, admittedly, but it's also very low and under, kind of like under the seat where your fuel tank would be in a normal car. Okay? So, those of you who are physics teachers and even those of you who are not can start thinking about why the Mitsubishi may have wanted to put the, locate the engine in that position. Okay? Because there are also advantages to that. But it did, it did need to take a bit of thinking out of the box. It did need to take a little bit of playful thinking. Okay? <clears throat> so, for example, um, okay, I promise the, the rest of the slides will not be on the eye. Huh? But, so, it looks like a normal fuel tank, right? But, for this particular one, there's actually a power socket. Okay? And then you can see that's up into the car, uh, into the wall. So, it's just like a normal, uh, uh, normal, normal power wall socket. Huh? This, this particular picture was taken at a uh, cycle and carriage. Okay, so back to the old time day. Now, you can see that if the, if Mitsubishi or other companies uh, which have creative in their names or otherwise have um, subscribed to a creative disposition or schools which profess to try to promote creative thinking, you can see that if they if that um, there's a danger about um, there's a danger associated with too serious an attitude, huh? okay? Uh, um, but but that's not to say that that's not to say that everything is frivolous, lah. All right. So let me give you another example, lah. So we meet business, don't play play. So now this is a snapshot of MOE's Twitter feed. Okay, I assume we all know roughly what is Twitter, even if we don't necessarily tweet. But this is a screenshot of MOE's Twitter feed. Okay, <clears throat> now, um, so we have we have MOE using the the main feed to to like a kind of like mini press release lah. For example, so I'll just read out the top. Come on, find out what what find out what it's like for our students who embark on overseas CIP. What do prospective undergrads and alumni think of university education? Read this to find out more. So basically, it's the official Twitter page of MOE. Now, so you can, you may, so it's actually good that MOE tries to have a Twitter account because this is evidence that MOE realizes that a totally we mean business attitude or approach is not necessarily going to be relevant for the present century which we live in. So it's good that they are playing around with these forms of social media. Okay? However, <clears throat> so this next crop shot which you can't really see, um, never mind, you just get your right idea, is basically it's another screenshot from another web page uh, from a from the blog of a local teacher. Okay, so he's he's a he's a very good edu blogger. He doesn't use his blog to rant, which is good, and he uses his blog in a very professional way. And one of his points from this particular blog post, which I took this picture from, was that on the left you have MOEs, um, you have the Twitter hashtag EDSG at SG at Singapore EDSG. On the right. You have the Twitter hashtag SGEDU, Singapore at the and, 
MOE's Twitter page is following the hashtag SGEDU. MOE's Twitter page is following the hashtag SGEDU. The teacher's point was that SGEDU is actually used by Singaporeans to either parody Singapore's education policies or as a way of leveling their I want to use the word ayer, but ayer is too cheap a word for some of you, I think. Um, they complain about, about education in Singapore um, using the hashtag SGEDU. So now, this has the implication that on MOE's official web page, if it follows SGEDU, if it follows SGEDU, not only will you get all these nice pre-packaged little um, mini press releases which are the desired messages that that the central body wishes to promulgate about education in Singapore but you will also get feedback from the ground feedback not only from teachers, feedback from parents, feedback from, feedback from other stakeholders and I'm sure feedback from students as well so is this a good thing or not? I need you to think about this seriously you don't have to give me a response but throughout the rest of the morning you need to think about such questions a little bit seriously, okay? Once you open up, once you play with social media, once you play with technology, once you play with new um, um, ways of learning and new ways of designing, um, you do not necessarily, increasingly, you do not necessarily, you cannot necessarily predict all the outcomes. And not only that, you cannot necessarily control your message very uh, you cannot control your you cannot exercise full control over your message okay so this is very very important um, um, I'm sure you can think of parallels with your own classroom practice those of you who give your students MSN accounts uh, or rather, those of you who share your MSN account with your students those of you who share your Facebook accounts with your students I'm sure you can think of similar uh, parallels okay <clears throat> so essentially would it have been better this is something that only you can, I want you to think about, would it have been better that, that MOE follows EDSG, which is the more serious kind of uh, um, um, debate, or this kind of <coughs> um, um, more... Yeah, okay, I think you get my point from this slide, huh? Okay, next. Oops, yeah, correct. So, don't play again, huh? So, we name business. So, <coughs> yeah, I just have a look for time. There's a, there's now, if we mean business, that means the, co the corollary, the, the, the implicit assumption that we are making is that life is not a game, okay? And indeed, um, uh, there are many arguments that life is indeed not a game, um, although, again, you nowadays, for those of you with, uh, with uh, iOS 5 on the iPhone or iPad, you have Find My Friends. Okay? So, Find My Friends is actually a very useful application um, because it helps you to know where your friends are in a geospatial location. Okay? So, here for example, I can see that my friend is driving along Engneo Avenue. Now, this technology has never ever been afforded before, okay? Because it's a combination of, of all sorts of it's a co things coming together. It's a combination of GPS coming together. It's a combination of um, broadband and Wi-Fi, as well as, uh, uh, to an extent, not really, like, but to an extent, cloud computing as well. So, now, <clears throat> for those of you who are avid gamers, and I know that at least one or two in the audience, for those of you who are avid gamers, this is essentially a mini-map of your world. You know, the, the, when, you, when you see your, your students playing their, their uh, Warcraft and I don't know what else, Counter Strike, in the top, usually it's in the top corner of their screen, or it could be elsewhere, there's usually a little map of the environment, and then they have all the green dots representing where all the players are, so that at any one time they know where each other is, so that they can strategize well. So this is essentially this for the real world. Never before has this been available at such uh, easy rate. So life is not a game, but increasingly life is becoming a little bit more game-like, 
Okay, so that means that we need to know kind of what is going on in games because we need to think of how our students understand games and what they transfer from this understanding of games to their lessons. This is very important. Huh? What they transfer from this understanding of games to their lessons. The kinds of ways of thinking that they adopt in games that they may bring to their lessons and that we as teachers may leverage, may take advantage of. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the play because the opposite of play is here again I want you to think seriously, yeah? It's not this is not a frivolous question. What in your mind is the opposite of play? Well, well okay, well, okay, thank you for your um thank you for your contribution, Mrs. Slow. Um so okay, <clears throat> so the opposite of play is work. And indeed, some people have um, indeed some people have uh, I was thinking because yeah okay never mind okay indeed some people have connoted that the, we must be more serious okay let's get down to business let's get serious so because life is increasingly becoming more game like. So therefore, people start looking at games. By the way, this is a, uh, a photograph of a book, uh, a book uh, cover. Okay, so you can go and see it on Amazon. So increasingly, people uh, are looking at uh, how people operate in games, and then they attribute the word "serious" to the game. Why? Because because some people might say. That the opposite of play is being serious. The opposite of play is meaning business. So now um, <clears throat> I've got quite a subtle point to make. Uh. Uh, I'm trying my best how to think how to make it without the coffee helping me. Now ah, I know I know I know how to make it. Serious games, right? This is the title of the book. Okay. And then, what's the subtitle of the book? Games that educate, train, and inform. What is missing from the subtitle? Or rather, this subtitle reflects what kind of assumption about teaching and learning? Yeah, okay? I think you all get the point right. Now, this is a very critical point, huh? This is, albeit what just one book, huh? But the people who wrote this book, the people who compiled all these little case studies, were compiling them from a particular paradigm that if you want to that that games firstly that games can be serious and that games which are serious are games which educate, train and inform. It's a very monologic interaction. It's a very one-way interaction. And I would question whether this is truly how games, uh, why, why our learners find, our games so, find, find good games so engaging. Because I don't think learners which learners find good games so engaging are so engaged because they feel themselves educated, trained, or informed. Okay? <clears throat> so, there's another problem with this thing, serious games, uh, which is why uh, my colleagues in NIE, those of us who know better, don't use it. I know some schools have bought into it, okay? There's a school nearby which has bought into it, which I will go unnamed. But um, some people in NIE are casting doubt on this whole thing about serious games. Because what? Because why? I'm going to say because why. Sorry, very, very, very bad English. Huh? Because why? Because the word serious games implies that there are Games which are not serious. So play which is not serious uh, is frivolous. Is play which is not serious frivolous? So what is the opposite of play? Remember just now I said, right? What is the opposite of play? That's why I, I wanted you to have some time to think about it. So, so if play which, that means uh, if you subscribe to this assumption, uh, so you will, you will as, a, as a consequence of that assumption, you will make the assumption that play which is not serious, that means there's that such a thing as not serious play in the first place. Okay? There's such a thing as not serious play. Why? Because you have 
prefix the word game with serious. So if you have prefix the word game with serious, that means you are distinguishing serious games from another subset of games. So another subset of games is not serious. So play which is not serious is frivolous. This is your assumption that you are implicitly making. Not many people will articulate this, but this is the assumption that they are implicitly making. So, there are many problems with this. Huh? Because if play which is not serious is frivolous, is indeed how you, your assumption. Huh? And what is frivolous? Frivolous means almost like, like useless like that, no. That means it's a waste of time. That means there's such a thing as play which is a waste of time. That's why we come back to don't play, play. Because we don't want our students to play, play. Because we don't want our students to waste their time on frivolous activities. Because this is our underlying assumption. And this underlying assumption has been drilled into us very, very subtly and very implicitly um, by if, if we don't stop to think about it. Okay? So, you need to ask yourself of your own experience of play that you observe in the canteen, in the playground, in the classroom, um, and with your own children, is there such a thing as frivolous play? In other words, what exactly do we mean by play? That's why I asked that question right at the beginning. Okay? So no frivolous play in our school. We don't want that. Obviously not. Or do we? Or is there even such a thing as frivolous play? <clears throat> because frivolous play is not directed to productive ends. Okay? Now, um, I'm going to show this slide. Huh? This slide is a bit hard to see. Um, I, I, I took this slide more for, as my own souvenir. Huh? I took this slide more as my own souvenir because I took it at a local, I took it at a civil service college in Singapore at a talk by uh, this Amor called John C. Brown. And um, he was talking, <coughs> he was trying to sell a book, like all Amor's who come to Singapore do. Okay? So um, he was talking about this title called Networks of Imagination. So I'm showing you this slide at this point of time now because in this particular slide, in this title of talk called Networks of Imagination, he talks about networks of practice, communities of interest, and how they can come together through participation into, into some, how they can be strengthened by imagination. So this is of relevance to this present morning's discussion because you're all talking about PLCs and PLTs. Okay? So you need so now, but I'm just saying that John C. Lee Brown has suggested that <clears throat> such PLCs can be augmented or strengthened if we consider the imagination. Now at this talk that he gave in, during the Q&A, um, some people were asking him about imagination, or rather some people were using the word imagination in their questions, okay, to him. So, then it helped me to understand that some Singaporeans who are either in business or in leadership positions or who think very highly of themselves, um, uh, not necessarily under the leadership team here, also, um, um, some Singaporeans have, have, they were confusing the word imagination with imaginary. So they were using the word imagination in their QA with John C. Brown. They were using the word imagination as in, in, a, in, a pejorative, in a pejorative sense, meaning that they were using it as a negative. They were using it as, yeah, why you want to ask us to talk about imagination when we need to focus on our KPIs, when we need to focus on uh, the bottom line and so on and so forth. Okay? So, <clears throat> it helped me to realize that there was a disconnect between how some people understand imagination and how John C. D. Brown understood imagination. So, when, so, um, let me try to elaborate that. Huh? Okay, so this imagination imaginary, uh, come on, get rid of serious. So, meaning, <coughs> um, when John C. Lee Brown asks us to think about imagination, he is say, he's asking us to, he's, uh, okay, so I'm getting a bit, let me see if I can help you with another slide. 
Let me see if I can have it another time. Um, I think it goes back to my, my earlier point. I think it goes back to my earlier point about serious, the, 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 the artificial distinction between serious and frivolous. Okay? And the, 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 the association of serious with good and non-serious with bad. Or rather with frivolous with bad. Okay? So likewise, for people who confuse for people who think that the imagination is just they are, I don't know how to say. So for some people think that imagination is daydreaming. So if you daydream on the job, that means you are being imaginative, but you are also being uh, you are also wasting company time, and you are not being productive to your department. Okay. For example, if you are asked to set the scheme of work for next year, and then you go and try to and then your, your boss can, or your colleague catches you daydreaming, then that is obviously not a necessary Okay, So imagination is often associated by, by some Singaporeans with daydreaming and therefore another waste of time. Okay, And therefore, imagination is not to be too strongly um, given credence to. Okay, So back to this point again. Huh? Wait, huh? I'm coming to the end. Huh? Um, <laughs> Hey, how come I keep? Wait, hang on. Uh. I seem to be. Ah, yes. Okay. So, play is extremely intentional. I have. I don't have children of my own, but I have had the privilege of observing my nephews and nieces at play. They are still in primary school. Some of them are pre-primary. Even at that age, uh, and I'm sure um, you have your own children, and and we all we all are teachers, so we've all observed uh, young. I don't use the word kids, uh, young students and ch children playing. There are very few times when play is not intentional. Even when, even when I see my nephew uh, or my niece uh, playing Cooking Mama on the iPhone, uh, uh, she's like using the multi-touch gesture to just like fry an egg on the screen. Uh. It looks very stupid, but, but there's great intention behind it, you know. She is trying to fry an egg. It's a virtual egg, but it's an egg. Nonetheless, it means something to her. It is authentic. It is authentic to her. Okay. Now, the reason I mention authentic is because we, um, um, I've got a couple of uh, new master's thesis to who are under me now, for, uh, and then. And then some people are use. I, I know some teachers are bandying around the word authentic assessment quite loosely. I don't think they really understand what they mean by authentic and the word authentic assessment. So they, they, when, they, when I hear them talk about authentic assessment, they, they, they talk about, um, they actually use it to mean uh, non-traditional forms of assessment. But that's not necessarily authentic. Huh? So we need to really understand what we mean about Something can be authentic. You need to ask yourself, who is it authentic to? Is it authentic to you as the as the teacher, as the curriculum designer, or is it authentic to the learner? Obviously, it needs to be authentic to the learner if it's truly to be authentic assessment. Very often, like we give them, like okay, so we ask them. No, it's, um, there's nothing wrong with giving things like um, um, portfolios and blogs, uh, as assignments. But the thing is, the learner himself or herself must find the task meaningful. You need, and that is your job. That is something that technology cannot take away, as you know. Okay, you need to make the mediatory bridge between the assessment and the meaning behind the assessment so that the, the learner is willing to invest time and effort in doing the assessment well, whether it be traditional or non-traditional. Okay? So play is extremely intentional. Now I'm going to finish up. So um, I know I told you that I cannot talk about second life, I cannot talk about cars, but I managed to talk about both in the, even though I told you I won't talk about it. So <clears throat> now I know you cannot see this. I'll, I have another slide which enlarges this. I just wanted to give you the context of this before I enlarge the slide. I was, I was, um, I was uh, in, in second half one day and I was talking to my friend in Australia. This friend in Australia is still in uh, second, I'm not going to. Um, so now, he had this tremendous insight. Uh, you know, from the mouth of children, great pearls of wisdom come. Uh, this guy is only 14 years old. Uh, and he said this, 
You never forget how to build. It's imagination. <coughs> Go explore it if you want to. It's very, very profound. This is a 14-year-old kid from Australia. You never forget how to build. It's imagination. Go explore it if you want to. It may not necessarily strike you as profound right now, but if you think about it, it is. Uh, he was actually referring to Minecraft. Okay? Because he was encouraging me to go and try out Minecraft. But, nevertheless, his words have great relevance to curriculum design. His words have great relevance to, to pedagogical innovation. Okay? You never forget how to build. Why? Because it was authentic to him. Build. Building is a great affordance of games and virtual environments. Imagination. He understood when other Singaporeans could not understand what imagination is. Go explore it. You need to motivate yourself to explore it. Nobody can lead you there if you want to. It is extremely... I've never seen such a profound statement in my life. Okay? So, uh, with that, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Lim, for the very engaging and humorous uh, keynote. Let's hope that this will be a precursor to more play play in BGSS. Okay, now next, I would like to just uh, 